And um, I will start with uh, thanks to UCLA University and especially your amazing professor, Olga. And I should confess that you are very lucky to have one of the most active women in design as your teacher. And I am really honored to, for this um, activity. And also we had some other great connection before. And as you see, the um, I, I mean, you write from left to right, and we are writing from right to left. And it's just hello in my language. And we say salam. And uh, just a little uh, about what you can see in my presentation. It's non uh, linearity and also full of flashbacks because I like Quentin Tarantino and just the way of uh, his storytelling. But you will see about my background, my career, design studio in Tehran, and a role as a designer in this world, which is uh, I am focusing more because uh, the main topic is about social posters. And there are two ways to connect with me. They are easiest way. First of all, and most of the time, I will check my Instagram is parisa.tashakuri. And also my website is uh, pretty active. And you can send me email or message through my website. OK, the first thing, maybe you can think, some of you maybe don't know where is Iran, where is my country. And uh, but um, Olga and I, we are from the same side of the <laughs> earth. And uh, as you see, the map of my country is like a cat. We always remember that from our childhood, which is the, the map and the uh, around of that is like cat. And the phrase, maybe you know about this phrase, escape from your comfort zone in America. And I moved to the US when my husband and I were in a very stable position more than any other time in our life. And we moved to United States in that time. And now I am teaching at CMCI's advertising and public relations and media design department uh, since 2019. Actually, maybe it's good to having a mind map of my life in your head. I started my career from 2000 while I was still a student and I had to work to pay for my tuition because I went to a private school. I wore lots of hat during my career working for two well-known advertising agency and later opening my studio and had a chance to focus more on art, social, and environmental projects. Life is all about making connection, and I connected to so many good people through my design projects. Actually, I worked as a junior designer in a small company first, and then senior designer. And as you see, each time that I improved my career, I connected to so many cool people from photographers, developers, project managers, educators, ambassador, vendors. I mean, I was very, very lucky to work with so many different people. <clears throat> and I started working as a designer uh, and art director uh, from 2000 to 2010 in some international advertising agency in Tehran and they were to very well-known agency. And I am telling this part because it's good to know about the background of people. I didn't jump from the first of my career, the first year of my career to the um, poster design and things like that. I started my job as working with different brands, national, international, and I designed so many logo design and campaign for different companies, <clears throat> excuse me. And I started working with uh, packaging design. I designed so many packaging design um, for those companies that I worked. And also I had a chance to work for international brands. As a young designer, 
I was a stable with a very good income in that time by doing design for companies like Unilever. I was um, their um, main uh, creative director in uh, an art director in for some brands like Dove, Lipton for many years when I worked in Darbag International Agency. But I was not satisfied by what I was doing. After 14 years working in the heart of stress in two huge advertising agency, my former boss politely fired me. And um, it was great for me. He was very clever and smart and he just wanted to push me to open my studio. And he said, you can do it because many clients likes you. And um, so it was actually great for me. And I turned out, I started to focus on some other projects that I liked with munis municipality, with um, publishers. I focused to um, work on for some projects with my friends and some of my masters about book design, about poster design exhibition and hands-on project that I have done in my um, career, in my studio for 25th um, anniversary of um, Mexico Biennale. And also I had a really great time working with more than uh, six publications. In that time, working with publication was a great credit for each designer. It didn't have a lot of money, but it was a huge um, credit on our career. And I worked maybe more than 150 book cover design for different um, publications. And I like most of them because they were very artistic and I experienced different style during that time. And about the social posters, I believe each of us comes to this world for a reason. And in any job, we have a special duty to the community. My connection with social posters goes back to 1996, when I decided to work on environmental posters for my final thesis um, for the Bachelor of Art. And my main resource of information was UNESCO journal and National Geography magazine that had been printed in Iran in that time. And I researched and focused on uh, grassroots activities by local people who tried to reduce the environmental pollution through simple ways in their er area. And for the design section, I created 20 posters on environmental issues. And some years later, I developed some of the posters and updated them in more professional look. I remember in that time, um, maybe in 2000, I um, traveled to Turkey and um, one of the very well-known graphic designer in Turkey, Sadek Gara Mustafa, he saw my poster design I mean, the same poster that I designed for my thesis. And he said, these are great. You should develop them and you should send them in some um, poster exhibition. And another um, teacher friend that I had in that time, Reza Abedini also uh, pushed me to do that. And before that, I had no idea about poster contests and poster exhibition in the world. And these are two examples of the series about air pollution and saving the ozone layer from those series. And still we have a lot of problem of pollution, air pollution in Tehran. And maybe Olga remember this poster and this was another poster of that collection, which brought me design awards and credits and helped me to transit from a junior designer to a professional one. Um, it was in 2003 that I sent this poster for the first time to a, to a contest. It was in Ukraine. It, was, it, it is still my lovely um, 
poster contests and poster exhibition about the environmental problem, very professional. And um, it's just, you know, uh, helped me to do this transition from being a junior designer to a professional one, because I judged by many um, international designers and it was a great honor for me to be among the winners. And it also had a great impact on Iranian graphic artists to draw their attention to depicting social problems. I agree that we are not able to change the world through design, but I can prove how design can be a life changer. And my life has been a good example for that. That poster, along with other activities in the community uh, of design and the society, connected me to the international design community and um, open a window into a new world, actually. I connected to so many great designers and I learned something from each of them. I know that I, I remember how naive I was when I uh, started as a, um, being some among the jury member in Ukraine for the first time. And, I didn't know anything about that, but I learned from other people and they gave me that chance to be more professional. I also was lucky to meet great students like you from um, countries with different cultures and background. And it was very, um, you know, a two way learning process for me. I, I, I like to working with new generation because they, they are great. They are always ahead of everything, I think. And, and as you all know, most of the visual design students around the world are girls. While in the real world industry, we still do not have an equal condition. So as an educator, I could share my personal story with students. And young generation of design should believe in their power and never give in to obstacle because not all successful women were exceptional or Martian. They were exactly like us, but with more confidence and perseverance in their profession. Going back to the social posters, working and living as a designer in uh, an Islamic country has many limitations. For example, I remember the time I was working on Pantin hair uh, products campaign about 14 years ago. And just imagine you want to advertise for shampoo or conditioner while you have no permission to show women's hair. It was frustrating. And also it's really struggling process. It sometimes push you to be more creative by finding other ways to solve the problem. And here are good example for that. Considering all the restrictions that existed in Iran to talk about sensitive issues such as AIDS, and educating people um, about AIDS and these kind of diseases. I designed these two posters for UN AIDS um, activities in Iran, although they never paid me for them and they, they decided not to publish even these two posters. But I brought up the importance of educating people before any sexual relationship or decision to have children just by making connection between pins and the human interaction. It was really, I, I tried to talk indirectly about the sexual relationship. And let's talk about this poster with the title, uh, Petroleum Peace in the Middle East. When you live and grow up in Middle East, you're always surrounded by stressful news. In recent years, so many insane incidents have, um, have occurred around the world and especially in the Middle East um, from bitter events like 
war of Iraq and Iraq, that all people in my generation experienced that for seven years to the Afghanistan conflicts, insecurity in Pakistan and instability in Kuwait and Lebanon. And these are all the things that happen in Middle East. And these have all had one message for me. There will never be any so-called peace in the Middle East. And even if peace is declared, it will not be a reasonable and logical peace. All this driven gift is, um, is and will be the um, primary cause of insecurity. And we will continue to see many crises as long as this material exists in this part of the world. And it, it has a lot of meaning for us. And because of that, I designed this poster about that matter. And throughout our lifetime, we all saw how women, men, and even defend, defenseless children protested with tied hands in the street. Sometimes they are horrifying, but they all remind us of the brave and desperate people who want to change from the despotic rulers of their countries. I designed this poster to honor all the brave people who refuse to be silent against the dictatorship and who send their cries out to the world's people in my country and also abroad. And this poster has designed based on that experience. And no matter where we live, we all are familiar with um, electoral fraud in how our hope are ruined sometimes during the election. You also encounter this problem here. And it's happened again in my country some years ago. And um, our generation and other generations experienced how all both of Iranian people had been manipulated by corrupted Iranian government with most suppression and I created this poster um, to remember that. Another topic that always strikes me in is women's right. Growing up as a girl in a country full of controversy, there were always so many questions running through my mind. During my life, I observed the cruelty and discrimination against women all around me. There were different levels of aggression from physical to verbal abuse. And seeing this dynamic in my childhood, I always thought, why do the girls in my family not have the same rights as the boys? These later transform into the questions, why do the women in my country not have the same rights as men? And why have women not been able to fight for their freedom? Why do many Iranian women not even know what freedom could look like for them? Although Iran is a country with about 5,000 years history, in each era, we can see the system of patriarchy in the society, as well as the powerful woman who tried to break these boundaries and fight for an equal society. You can see the many facets of Iranian women just by a simple Google search. You will see conservative women as well as young girls protesting for their everyday rights. And even the culture of women are really uh, different uh, in different area of Iran because we have, we have a very multicultural country, um, Kurdish people, Turkish people, Farsi language people, and um, Arab language people. And each of the area in our country have different culture and they speak with different language, they have different outfit and customs. 
it was through my exposure to higher education and seeing the power of design as my voice in society that I realized that my journey needed to continue beyond the barriers and uh, that were put up on me in Iran. Through um, the agency that I found in the United States, I am now able to display to the world that real Iran looks like with all the complexity and then continue to spread hope to those who still wish for an equal Iran. This poster is dedicated to the generation I came from who witnessed the most violent behavior by the conservative community. Believe it or not, there were some people in our university who were responsible for censoring art books in the library. And that really made us feel uncomfortable and you know, mad. We, we didn't like to see those painting beautiful pictures of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Rembrandt, that they are censored by some crazy people. And, and um, I designed this poster for that feeling that I had in that time. And the poster second um, took the second place the, in the international um, poster exhibition of Colorado um, two years ago. In 2017, just a few months before my immigration to the US, I received an invitation from Elizabeth Resnick, uh, who is a, a professor of um, Boston University. She is a very fierce, powerful designer, and she arranged many social posters in the design world. And she asked me to design a poster about women's rights. Um, I involved with the project very quickly. And during the design process, I remember that my mind blossomed with many ideas that came from my bitter experiences in a family with a conservative background. And, um, you know, but instead of showing the negative face of women's rights in Iran, I decided to focus on women's empowerment, um, not just in Iran, in all over the world. I tried to give a message which is universal for all women in the world. And I decided to design that. Um, I mean, I designed all of my posters just like basic sketches as you may be students do it um, in your classes. I still do it uh, and start with the sketches and improve my sketches in different world, um, in different way by using some transparent paper and things like that. And then I decided to use embroidery that I was really good in that to um, execute my poster because most of the women in the world, they, they do embroidery, especially the, in the, they have this in their tradition and um, they know about that. And I try to use the same way, which is a very common, um, common art and craft between all women in the world. I also decided to execute another idea among my sketches. Many people ask me what this poster means. And this type of fabric is mostly used as a hijab for traditional religious women in Iran for praying or in their casual family gathering. I remember when I went to my uh, aunt's um, house when I was a child, I saw most of women, they had this kind of hijab with the same texture. And I loved that. I, I, it was part of my life always to see women with this kind of um, hijab. And, but you know, with the modern use of embroidery on this type of fabric, I wanted to remind that women's right don't belong just to modern or educated women. 
and all level of women should know about their rights and they should fight for that. And because of that, I, I try to work with this fabric. And Birdie Magazine, uh, which is the Colorado, the only uh, Colorado art magazine, published this poster for New Year in 2019 with an article from their uh, chief editor on women's rights. And um, many people like this in their magazine. Okay, and this is another poster. And it's the name of this exhibition is Civilitas. Is another exhibition that will be launched in Mexico maybe next year and some other places. And the Latin word refers to citizens' willingness to give of themselves for the greater good of the civitas or society. This poster call came from a Poster Without Border that they are a very active group in United States, Eric, Erin and Antonio, and they arranged so many great social poster uh, exhibition around the world. And uh, to be civil uh, is fundamentally to care about community as well as the dignity and flourishing of each individual within it. So as we all been exposed through our Q uh, QR code, function after COVID and I enjoyed experiencing digital interaction, I decided to use that feature in my poster because I believe the most important part of being civil is engagement. So I will invite you all scan the poster with your mobile phone to see the meaning behind that and talk to me about this poster and then I continue after that. How you pronounce it, Bani Adam? Bani yeah. Adam? Bani Adam, it's a Persian word. And you can read the poet in English. Can you read it in the in Farsi? Yes, the 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 main um, poet is Bani Adam Azay Yek Peykaran, ke dar afari nishde yek goharan. This is just one part of the um, the poet. It, he it is from Saadi, very well known. Um, poem from Iran, you know, and um, I just wanted to interact with people through the poster, not just, and just show part of the um, very important culture of my country. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, let me yeah. continue. And you can share your thought about the poster and about the, um, poet in the um, chat. Okay, let me continue. And in 2018, there was a very important event in Switzerland in occasion of uh, 70 years, Universal Declaration of Human Rights in the Geneva Conference. And poster for tomorrow, another great event that um, they launch uh, some very, very good topic of um, social problem through poster design. They decided to have a poster show outside of conference on the um, fence of the outside. And it was a last minute decision and they called 50 designer to send their poster design. I was planning for a workshop in Oklahoma State in that week and uh, Oklahoma State University and had no time to design a poster for them. 
but I really liked the idea and I wanted to engage with that. It was actually an honor for me to be among those 50 designers because I always like when people engage with the poster in a street because posters belong to the streets. They come from the street and we should keep them alive there. And because of that, I decided to design it in the middle of my workshop when I was in Oklahoma University. And I worked on that during my workshop that was planned with stencil and spray and some other physical material. And it was so fun and students just enjoy that. And they just helped me even find some material to execute my project also there. And in, um, it was just a um, very great honor for me to see my poster among those 50 other posters. And uh, it was just about equality. And I tried to having different texture and material and using different colors to show diversity and equality between the different uh, race and generation. During all my 20 years career, I have never stuck with one specific technique or style. Maybe that's not good from some perspective of some people, but I like to, I still love to experience. I love to try everything. You know, I'm very, you know, hyperactive designer, always want to do something. And, Another project that I was invited in 2019 was Future Now. And it was again for an exhibition based on the United Nations 17 goals to save the earth and nature. It's a, it's a huge plan that they are planning for the future. And I decided to work with Jungle Animal Toy that my son and I always enjoyed to play with with them in his childhood. And we were always busy to speaking in a set of the animals and just um, placement of them in the, in the room and just making some road and house for them. And I, I wanted to repeat that experience in a real life. And I, I just tried to create my poster exactly in the same way. And the message of the poster was a chair to you a home to them. And um, that was um, against um, the frustration. And the exhibition finally opened yesterday in Bolivia Biennale after two years postponed because of the COVID. The uh, Poster Without Border group couldn't have this exhibition uh, in the time of Bolivia Biennale two years ago. And because of that, this year they launched the uh, poster exhibition. And Without Borders, Without Drugs uh, was another collaboration that I created between the University of Alabama and Universitat San Ionico to Loyola, something like that. Uh, if I pronounce it correctly because it's an Spanish word. And this project was part of a community project which aimed to decrease vandalism and delinquency in the district of Comas in La Lima, Peru, which was connected to drug use by young people. And uh, because of my connections at both university, I was able to pro propose a collaboration which resulted as a workshop at the University of Alabama. And um, I helped the student to create and, uh, and execute their ideas. And the final result was awesome because it was design of a students to give some message to other students in other countries about using drug. And I also designed a poster for that collection um, that you can see in the right, don't let drugs destroy your life. 
And all posters were printed with the help of Rafael Vivanco, the professor of graphic design at Peru that arranged this um, plan for us. And it was the idea of one of his grad students that he wanted to have his thesis on a social project uh, and poster design. And the posters were installed in commas where young people passed every day and saw the posters. And the feedback has shown a great impact on the area and the yachts. Okay, and my statement from 2019, as a human, not just a designer also. I won't participate in any exhibition except for social awareness. Because if some poster design exhibition, they, they don't want to give any message to the society. It's just wasting the money and wasting the, the paper and just cutting more uh, you know, trees. And the second one, I always ask the curators if they can print my projects, my posters on recycled material or present them digitally. I prefer digitally presentation. I no longer have favorite brand in the fashion industry. And most of the time I buy from, I shop in um, thrift stores. And it was not part of my culture before coming to United States and just try to understand the idea of thrift store and secondhand store. And I, I, I found that very, very useful for the um, um, society, for the people and also for the nature. I will kindly inform people about the consequences of using plastic or wasting food. I try to, to give them some information that maybe they don't have access to those information. And I will do everything I can um, for people, animals, nature, to maintain environmental sustainability in society. And now if we, I mean, I hope in, you enjoyed my talk and if we still have time, I would like to show some of my social, uh, some of the social projects of your friends at CU if you are interested. Well, yeah, I think we can, no, Gary. I think we have like five, ten minutes, and then I, I believe people want, uh, have some questions, right? We hope because it's always great to have a feedback and like share sure. your thoughts, your questions. It's always great, especially on Zoom when we can be in the same room. I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it is it, it would be awesome. So guys, think about the questions to Parisa and then you can share and show us more a little bit. I mean, we are visual people, we need images. <laughs> okay, great. Would you like we go for the question first or for watching some uh, cool videos from my students? They are very short. Okay, yeah, let's let's watch something short. Okay, cool. These are uh, actually, um, I try to bring the social awareness to my classes. And each semester for each class, I will give them a project about um, social problem or environmental problem and things like that. It can be a brand for social change or it will be like um, tactile poster or animated poster to fit with, with the new media. And I will show some of the best that you, I have today. Let me share my screen again. Okay. Um, okay, I will open one of them to be sure that you can see that.
you need to share your screen. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. exactly. Let me open them first mm -hmm. for saving the time. Okay, cool. Now I can share my screen. Okay, this is the first one. <laughs> And just pay attention, these are the students of, I mean, they are in the second year and they didn't have any design classes before my class. <laughs> This was about the uh, food waste. This was from Serena, another great student. This planet is threatened with destruction, and we who live in it are protect. The heavens break, the below a fire, the children die in From Sam, and this one is from uh, him. One from Jacob. And she fights for her life as she puts on a coat. As she fights for her life on the train, she looks at the rain as it pours. And she fights for her life as she goes in the store with the thought she has caught by a thread. She pays for the bread. And she are polluting uh, by mask now, which is another problem. Uh, from Aiden. from any
last one, which is about hope from uh, Nora. because I mentioned all names. The first one was from Kyle and the second one was from Kendi. Great, yeah, this is what I also saying um, this class, it's, it's actually really, this class is really about experimenting. So we, we're trying to do the same and the students yes. never did this kind of stuff before. And it's kind of the same thing. I'm always like, okay, let's try this, this, we, using taping stuff like collaging everything we just i wish we could have more time <laughs> it, yes it's, it's yeah. a classic situation especially this um th this like holidays uh, season so it's just it's crazy uh so i'm just curious like when you came and i know i had the same experience um as well when i came to the us what was your biggest cultural shock <gasps> Oh my God, I think language barrier, language, oh. because, you know, I thought when I was in Iran, actually, I thought that my English is good, okay? And because I could communicate with people out of Iran, but when you are living in the US, especially when you learned a little English based on the British, uh, you know, base, I couldn't understand people. And it was the biggest shock in my life because I couldn't communicate with them. They didn't care about my accent, about my language, but um, I just wanted to, wanted to belong, you know, belong to the so so society. And the, the, another problem that I really faced, because as I told you, I was in a very stable, position in Iran when I moved here. I was 43. I mean, I had my life. I had my studio. I had my lots of people around me. They were many people knew me in the world and in Iran and they they call we collaborated with each other. I came here. I didn't know anybody. The only friend that I knew was here was Eric Bolt that because of him, I came to Boulder because he was a really, really nice person and very, you know, supportive. Uh, but I need more. I just need some people to connect, to talk, to share my ideas, to, to speak about exhibition, just launch something. I was just empty. <laughs> Uh, do you have guys any questions? Because I have a few, but I wanted you to, to ask. Yes, please. You can, yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering what mediums you use to create your posters. Like, do you use physical collage and photography or do you create them digitally on like, on a program like Photoshop? Okay, I, okay, it was rice, yes yeah race race okay first of all before answering race question is it possible you you guys turn on your camera i want to make a screenshot as well <laughs> because i want to see you i just want to be i want to decentralize myself i want to see your beautiful faces and just create kind of interaction if it's possible I would like to talk to people, not just the black, you know, screen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I can I can explain what I am doing most of the time. I start always with the sketching system, and in the beginning, sometimes I don't have any idea about the execution part. But based on the my experience, uh, my experiences during my life. I start with doing them by, by hands-on material. That's my preferences always, because I enjoy more, actually. 
I won't say that I don't enjoy digital interaction and software. I, I'm really good at software using Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, but I prefer to manipulate the picture that I created from scratch. You know, I want to have my own material in Illustrator or Photoshop and manipulating them. But they are different based on each project. Sometimes I do them like by hands-on or embroidery, sewing, knitting, working with sequins and things like that. And sometimes I start just working in Illustrator and creating some um, illustration based on my sketches. I hope I could answer your question. <laughs> 